So we're asked to find x of t for the system, which is released from the equilibrium position with a velocity of 1 meter per second downward. So we can see that this is going to be a force vibration question because we have this forcing function applied to our mass, um, which is going to cause it to vibrate forever and ever and ever. So the first decision we need to make is where to measure the um, displacement from. So I'm going to measure it from the equilibrium position, so marking it in here, and I'll make it very explicit. So measure from equilibrium position. Alright, so remember that when we measure from the equilibrium position, that means we can leave weight off our free body diagrams um, because we know that it's going to cancel itself out um, during, the, during that solution process. So, starting off with, we want to draw a free body diagram. So, if this is my mass, and I'm measuring x in the direction of the force, that's probably what you'd want to do. Um, so what that means is that both my force and the positive x direction would suggest that I'm going to move my mass um, mx double dot downward, so that's the direction of the acceleration. And if they're moving downward, it's going to mean that my um, springs are going to try and resist that motion. So they're going to try and push back up. And I have three of them. Each of them is going to have a force of kx in it. I've also got this additional force that I need to consider, um, which is equal to FO sine omega t um, as well. Again, remember, we're not putting weight on this free body diagram because um, you don't need to when you're measuring from the equilibrium position because you know it's going to fall out anyway. So this is my positive direction. And I'm going to sum my forces to be equal to the mass times the acceleration. So I'm going to have positive F. And I'm going to have negative, and there's three of them, so negative 3kx, sorry. And mx double dot is in the positive x direction, so I pop it in there as well, positive. So I want to put everything with an x on one side of the equation, everything without on the other. So that's what I get. And now I'm going to want to divide through by m so that I get a 1 in front of this term. Okay, so now I'm probably going to want to find what my natural frequency and damping ratio are. So I have that x double dot plus 2 omega n z to x dot plus omega n squared has to equal this part here. Okay, so the one in front of here equals the one in front of here. That means that x dot um, part has to equal the x dot part on this side, which is actually zero since we don't have one there. And sorry, this should have an x in it. So the omega n squared x part has to equal 3k on mx as well. All right, so let's start with the um, omega n squared. Oh, sorry, it needs to be 3k on m. Okay, so 3 times k divided by m, and we're given k is 12, m is 4. So the natural frequency of this system is 3 radians per second. Scroll up. And the other thing we need is our damping ratio. And for that we know that 2 omega n zeta has to be equal to 0, since there's no x dot part on this side. So that means that the damping ratio is equal to zero. And you could get that just by looking at your system. You have no damper, so it's going to be an undamped system. All right, so now what we're up to is solving for our equation x is a function of time. And because it's a forced, um, forced vibration question, we're going to have to solve for both the homogeneous and the particular parts. Okay, so we know that x is a function of t is equal to xh plus xp. And I'm going to start with looking at the xp part because that's the easy one. So we know that xp is equal to x sine omega t minus 5. And we can just use the um, simplified equations for our constants x and phi. 
Alright, so I've just pasted them in um, to save a little bit of time. So now it just becomes a case of needing to fill them in. And we have um, pretty much all the constants in here. The only one we need to think a little bit more about is the total stiffness in our system. So scrolling back up, um, you can pretty much get it just by um, you know, adding the three together, um, just by looking at it. Or if you're a little bit unsure from a mathematical perspective, if you go back to this um, form of the equation, the stiffness is just the part in front of the x um, term. All right, so k tote is going to equal 3k, and we know k is 12, so it's going to be oops, 36 newtons per meter. So that's what goes into the equation. All right, so putting it in, I said that the uh, magnitude of the applied force was 100 newtons. And I have everything else that needs to go in here. So I said that the frequency was 6 divided by our natural frequency of 3. And this is going to work out to be 0 because we have 2 times our damping ratio of 0. That really just goes away. So we can work out what x actually is. Um, and it comes out to be about, as a fraction, 25 on 27. So now we just need to work out what phi is. Again, we've worked out all these constants before, so it's just a matter of substituting in. And in fact, you're going to get 2 times 0 here on the top line anyway. So it becomes 10 inverse of 0 which is 0. So we've worked out our two constants and we can go back and put them into our x of p equation. So I'm just going to leave this in fractional form. Okay, phi turned out to be 0 so I'm just going to drop it from the equation. Okay, so now that we've worked out x of p, we can go back and work out the harder one, which is xh, um, because we're going to need to work out the constants in that equation. So xh um, relates back to your free um, vibration, so you need to look at your damping ratio and pick the appropriate equation. So we have a damping ratio of 0, which is undamped motion. So looking back at your list of formulas, you can pick this one off. And it's going to be A cos omega nt plus B sine omega nt. Remember that there's a different form of this. Um, if you prefer, you can use the form that looks something like A sine um, omega nt plus phi. Okay, but I'm just going to stick with this um, first form here. All right. So. We can substitute both of these into our equation for x. So we know it's just the addition of both of them together. Okay, and now we just need to use our initial conditions to work out the two constants that are left, a and b. So, scrolling back up here to the top. So we have that our system is released from the equilibrium position. So since we're measuring x from the equilibrium position, um, that's going to mean that at time equals 0, x equals 0. And we're giving it a velocity of 1 meter per second, and it's downward, which is the positive direction. So at t equals 0, x dot has to equal 1, positive 1. Okay, so there are our initial conditions. Now it just becomes a case of putting them into this equation and solving. So, the first one that I'm going to work with, um, because it's in terms of x and this equation, sorry, is already in terms of x. So putting it in, dodgy.
Okay, so we're going to get that 0 is equal to a multiplied by cos of 0 is 1. Here we've got sine of 0, which is 0, so that term's going to go away. And again here, sine of 0 is 0, so that's going to go away as well. So basically we end up with a must be equal to 0 then. Alright, so now we just need to work out what b is. And we have our second initial condition to be able to do that, but unfortunately it's in terms of x dot. So what I think I'll do in this case is substitute a equals 0 in, because that's going to drop a term. And then we'll take the derivative to be able to use the velocity um, condition. So we're going to end up with x is equal to a is 0. So we'll drop that. It's going to be b sine omega n, which we've already worked out. That was 3 plus 25 on 27 sine of 6t. All right, so now let's take the derivative, which is x dot. So we're going to get b sine goes to cos multiplied by the derivative inside the bracket, which is 3 plus 25 on 27. Um, again, sine goes to cos and multiplied by the derivative inside the bracket. So we can simplify this to be 3b cos of 3t plus, oops, sorry, this is going to become a number, 25 on 27 multiplied by 6, um, which is 5.556 approximately. So now we can use our initial condition um, in order to work out um, that extra constant b. So putting this in, We end up with um, this being simplified a little bit. We're going to get 1 is equal to cos of 0 is 1, so it's just going to be 3b. And again, cos of 0 is 1 here as well, so 5.556. So solving for b, our constant, so b is negative 1.519. So now we can go and substitute it back into our equation for x as a function of time, this one here. And we end up with x equals negative 1.519 sine 3t plus 25 on 27 sine of 6t. Okay, x is in meters and uh, t is in time. So I guess the only thing left to do would be to plot it and see what it looks like. And this is the plot from MATLAB. So again, the blue line is the homogeneous solution, the red line is the um, particular solution, and the yellow line is our total when we add them both together. So the homogeneous solution, um, this one is an undamped system, so you would expect it to be an oscillating um, motion for all of time, and that's exactly what we've got. For XP as well, um, it's a forced function that is a sine wave so we would expect this to be a sine wave forever and ever the forcing component and it looks a little bit funny i guess when you add them both together but i guess that's just because they have different frequencies to each other um, and in fact the red line is exactly half the frequency of the blue line sorry twice the frequency of the blue line so i guess the only other things to check um, are probably your initial conditions so we said that at x is equal to 0, if I shift this over slightly, um, sorry, time is 0, x is 0, and of course on our yellow line, our total, we have that happening. And we also know that at uh, t equals 0, x dot, the gradient or the velocity needs to be 1. And you can see we have a little bit of a velocity coming out of the axis, um, which would suggest we're on the right track there as well. So that's all that's left for that question. Um, see you in the next one.